Hey guys, we are here in beautiful Del Mar, California at our local Good Guys Car Show filming an interesting episode of Fix or Pass. Uh, so we're changing it up a little bit. We're seeing some cars in person here for sale at the uh, Car Corral and even one uh, nice Corvette in the show area. Uh, so we're going to bring you guys some footage of those cars, talk a little bit about them, and uh, all the pricing and phone numbers are going to be in the video. So if you guys are interested in one of these, check it out. Uh, we're just really stoked to be out here. It's a beautiful day looking at some cool cars. So let's get cracking. Okay guys, we are back at the office or the shop here. Um, what we're going to do is kind of talk through some of these projects we looked at. Um, by reviewing some of the footage, I was running around like a kid at a candy store there, so distracted. It was hard to get like a good assessment of the vehicles while I was there. And it also gives us a chance to do something that I always recommend is like maybe take a night to sleep on a project that you're looking at. Really like walk through some of the stuff you saw in your head. It's real easy in the moment to look at a project and you know, you start running wild with your dreams and hopes for it. So we just took a step back. That way we could talk about it a little bit. And also just in a more controlled environment, we were in the middle of an active swap meet, which was awesome. Um, I was having so much fun there. Uh, but what we're gonna do is just uh, look at some of the projects we saw there and just kind of talk about them as we see them here. All right, here is a 57 wagon. Uh, so this car was brought like obviously on a trailer. This guy rented a U-Haul trailer. Um, posted it up in the swap meet here. It's a two-door wagon, which is really neat, but it is not a Nomad. Um, the Nomad's really desirable, and you can tell the roof line is different on a Nomad. The trim is a little different, uh, but this is still a really neat car. Uh, as you can see, the guy had a lot of details posted on the sign. Um, so what we'll do is kind of, he had like a backstory on the car. So basically, um, you can pause it and read it maybe, but he basically acquired the car through um, a rental property, I think, that he, his tenant left it there. So he didn't know a whole lot about the car. Uh, so that's gonna be one where, you know, the history on this car is gonna be kind of questionable um, as far as like unknowns, but really the car in its project state is gonna kind of tell you already right off the bat, you look at this thing, it needs everything. You know, the body doesn't look too bad. Um, you wanna look for rust in the rockers of these cars. Even having the windshield out is nice because these corners by the door, uh, they really, where the bottom of the windshield meets the door there, some of these tri fives seem to get rust under the moldings there and under the rubber seal for the windshield traps moisture. You can see in the background, he's got another hood, another couple of fenders. Um, you can kind of see maybe the original color was like that real cool like 50s teal that's showing on the firewall. Um, the engine and trans is going to be the six cylinder, so base model car. Uh, you know, if you were going to restore this to original, you'd end up with a six cylinder, kind of a slow car that you have to putt around everywhere. So I would probably swap that out with a V8, um, you know, just to get a little more power. There's so much available for tri fives. Uh, the wagon is really neat. Being a two door wagon is a little more rare. Um, and it looks like it's, for the most part, all there. It needs everything. I mean, it depends on how nice you want this car but it's gonna need a lot of work. Um, but it's, it's a rolling chassis. He's got a lot of the parts for it. Um, and it was, a, it was cool to see him bring out a car like this. I think in the uh, description that he posted on the window, it said that he tried to actually offer this car to the San Diego Auto Museum and uh, they denied it. Uh, I don't think they're looking for like too many projects like that. Um, they do have an active department that restores cars, but for the most part, they're looking f to display like a museum quality car. You can see the interior. I mean, it's there. Somebody put an aftermarket steering wheel back in the day on there. Uh, everything's like kind of torn up, um, but there's some parts in the back. A lot of these trim parts, you want to make sure you have as much of that as you can, because some of it's hard to find. A lot of it is wagon specific, especially this model. I know in 57, they had so many different trim levels and variations of the same car. So what you want is a car that has all the trim that it's supposed to have so that you're not trying to hunt it down. And if it's wagon specific stuff, I mean, that could be a never ending, never ending hunt. Some of this, uh, the glass, like the very back ones wrap around. So they're just kind of hard to find, but you see the rocker here, it looks pretty darn good. Uh, towards the back, like uh, back by the back side of the door, you see there's just a big chunk missing on the rocker. So that's gonna need a patch, but they sell it. Uh, quarter panel looks pretty good. Um, not a lot of rust. It was kind of nice that it was on a trailer because you could get up under the car a little bit without having to get down on your hands and knees. So that was good. 
Um, rounding out the back, looks pretty complete. It's got all that trim. Like I said, that stuff's specific to this car. Uh, all these panels kind of look like they're from the car. They're the original panels. It's got the bumper, the bumper guards. Uh, all that stuff would need to be re-chromed. It even has a trailer hitch. So even with the six cylinder, someone was willing to tow something with this car. That's a, that's a pretty rudimentary trailer hitch. I don't think, I don't think uh, it would be too safe <laughs> unless you were towing some tiny trailer with that thing. Um, so that back glass I was talking about, you see how it wraps around and curves. That's like very specific to the smaller car. That one's broken. So you may or may not have a hard time finding that. Um, it's just completely gone on the other side. You can see that, uh, oh, actually it's not gone. It's, it's right there. Um, but you can see a lot of people were interested in the car. Um, it had an interesting backstory. It still has the old California black and yellow plates, uh, which were not the original plates for this car. It was probably replaced sometime in the 60s. Um, that's like more of a 60s plate. But it's kind of cool to have a vintage plate, even if it's not the original one for the car. Um, there's just something that's cool character about having like a, an, an old school plate on an old car. Um, so this is a big project, but it's the right one to start with. I mean, if you're looking for something, I think the price point was really good on this car. This was under 5,000 um, bucks. I mean, you're getting into a Tri-5 two-door wagon, a little bit more of a rare model for that price. You get extra parts. There's, I think there was a hood on the car and there's two more over here, two fenders. So you're, you, you, know, you may be able to pick the best one and sell some of that other stuff off and end up with a little scratch in your pocket. Um, but you're gonna, need all, you're gonna need all the extra money you can get because you're, you're gonna be going full bore on this car. It's real easy to, you know, the grill is missing. That's an important part on these 57s. There's a lot of little pieces in the grill. So you're gonna be spending some money on that. Um, there's a couple companies that specialize in only 57 or Tri-5 parts like Dan Chuck. Um, if you bought this car, you would get real familiar with their catalog. And uh, you could see how easy it is to spend a ton of money on this car. Or you could go the complete opposite way. You could just like kind of get this thing running, not worry about getting it right. Just address whatever safety concerns, uh, get the brakes good, you know, get it running, get some glass in it and just drive a rough beater around. Um, if that's in your, in your budget to like not go full bore with this car, you could do that. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that. Um, everybody wants a nice finished show car, but not every car can be that. Um, this car is a good base. If you, you know, the biggest thing would be that rocker area, that back behind the driver's door. Um, if you could get that patched up, kind of get all the sheet metal back on, uh, it would be a kind of a cool car. So next one, this is a 40, a 35 Ford Jalopy. Uh, this is a full blown race car. So this originally, I believe started, you can see, you can see it's got race car parts right off the bat. There's no confusing what this car is. Uh, but this is a steel body. I believe it did start as a three window coupe, which is extremely rare, extremely desirable. Uh, but there's hardly anything left of it. There's like just the rough shape of it. It's basically a shell sitting over this like, I would say this is probably 80s vintage era, uh, like a circle track car. Somebody probably ran this at their local track. Um, this is not like a road course car. So you can see it is really set up to turn left. Uh, but it's street registered, which is, Pretty bitchin', I, I would not mind like taking this thing out on the street. It's got good brakes. It's very, very raw. Like don't expect to be comfortable in this car. It's gonna be loud, it's gonna be hot, uh, but it's gonna be cool. You're gonna be the only one with a, a 35 Ford um, circle track car there. It's got a lot of the neat old uh, lettering on the trunk, you know, of people who are sponsoring it. You see this thing is so bare bones inside. I'm surprised it even has a passenger seat. Um, but it's got a shifter, it's got turn signals on there. You can see they're kind of like an afterthought to make this thing street legal, but it's got lights and turn signals. You can drive this thing. I wouldn't recommend like going on any road trips or anything, but I mean, it's got the gauges, it's got everything you need. You can tell they were ready to like take this thing, um, you know, to a cruise night or something, uh, you know, maybe something local. Uh, I don't know if those tires are actually DOT approved for the road. Um, but you know, you can swap that out, but this is a, this is a full blown race car, um, with a, a pretty hot 283 cubic inch V8 in it. So it's a Chevy, a small block Chevy engine in there, um, with those side pipes, very race car, but very cool, like super unique. I mean, if you show up anywhere with this thing, people are going to be curious about it. They're going to want to come look at it. You know, this thing doesn't have to be all like you know, the welds aren't all perfect on it. It's not shiny. It doesn't have like good fit and finish at all. This is a race car. This is like just something that was designed to do one thing. And that's like go around a circle track, probably get run into other cars at some point. Like it, it's kind of neat that the body even looks even, I mean, although it's rough, it's pretty complete. A lot of times these jalopy cars, 
they get really beat up out there on the track. This one has like Nerf bars on the side that probably kept it off the other cars. Uh, a lot of times when these cars are racing, they're they're bumping and rubbing, and you see the big you see the big push bar bumper in the back, and then you see the sliders on the leaf springs. This is like very race car stuff. Like that thing, when you pitch it into a corner, it's gonna turn left hard. So you know, like on the freeway and stuff, on and off ramps, this thing's gonna be super sketchy. This is gonna be a wild ride. Um, but around town, uh, it'd be pretty cool. And if your local track has any type of class or any type of event where you can like just take something out and not really be competitive, this would be awesome for that. It's, it's, it's vintage, you know. Um, like I said, I think it started as a three window and they cut these extra windows into the sides uh, to kind of give it that five window look. I think it would be really cool to, to put it back as a three window, maybe weld those panels back in. Um, it's stick shift. So it's got like a little pillow. That's all you get for comfort. Like there's just an old dirty pillow on the seat. So uh, you better strap up. You better put your belts on tight when you're in this thing and uh, just be ready for a wild ride. This thing is gonna be rough and raw, but fun. I, I guarantee you there's no possible way you can buy and drive this car and not have a smile on your face. Um, I don't know about the price point. I don't know exactly what something like, I mean, this something like this is so unique that it's worth what it's worth to the right person. Um, and if they have something in mind that they can do with this car or they have a collection of stuff like this, this thing would be awesome for that. Uh, I really liked it. I just, you know, I like purpose-built cars. I like race cars. This one's street registered in California, which I know you guys think that's crazy that we're not allowed to drive anything cool or fun here. But look at this thing. It's got the plates on it. It's got lights. It's got turn signals. I mean, I, I, I wanted to like jump in this thing and take it for a rip. We were actually, right in front of the horse racing track because at, at uh, our Del Mar Good Guys, um, that's where the swap meet is. Like basically you see the horse racing track in the background there. And this car with these tires and stuff, I think it would be rad if, if somebody like looked the other way, maybe a security guard, I would be more than game to take this thing out on the horse racing track and just fling some dirt with this thing. But uh, obviously I didn't, uh, it wasn't my car, I didn't buy it. Uh, but really cool, interesting project. Not something you see every day, especially here in Southern California. A lot of this stuff has gone by the wayside. Um, places in the South, you know, the heart of NASCAR country, you might see more stuff like this driving around. So I just thought it was really cool to see something like this out here. Very purpose built car, um, not for everyone. This is not everyone's cup of tea, but we figured we'd bring it to you guys and show it to you because it's just so interesting. The way it's, it's fully adjustable as far as the suspension. I mean, it's purpose built. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, it's purpose built for racing, not purpose built for like uh, get in and go to a nice comfy cruise and go to their drive in uh, with this car. This car is gonna beat you up. It's gonna ride rough. Um, parts are gonna be like you're shopping for them in a Speedway racing catalog, not at your local auto parts store for this thing. It's got a five speed, a quick change rear. So it's got some expensive parts in it. Uh, stuff that, you know, to build this car, you'd be over 11K for sure. All right, so we've moved on to a Corvette, man. This is a great looking car. This is a 64 Vet. Uh, we've actually given away a, a silver one, kind of similar to this car. Uh, we figured we'd bring you, this car was like more in the car show area, uh, but it's not a perfect car. It's still, uh, this still kind of falls in the category of fix or pass, uh, because if you look, a lot of the paint needs to be addressed. Uh, the car is valuable. Obviously this is a higher dollar car. Um, but you see it's, chi it's got chips and, and stuff all over it. I'm not sure what color this car was originally, uh, but I'd probably go back to that. He's got some nice wheels and tires on it, so it's kind of a looker, but it's a driver. You know, this is a, this is a driver quality Corvette, which it's very easy in the Corvette world to get into a car that's so restored and so valuable that you don't want to drive it. So this thing's at 55 grand, so that gives you an idea where the Corvette market is, even on a car that needs work. If you want it to be perfect, this is gonna need to be gone through. Um, a big thing with Corvettes, a lot of guys are very concerned about numbers matching stuff. Uh, here at Restomods, we're not as concerned about that. We want to, you know, kind of modernize and upgrade these cars. So this thing looks like it's got uh, some room for that. So, you know, it doesn't have the original wheels and tires. It's got these blue dot taillights that were super popular. I remember growing up as a kid, that was the coolest thing. All the guys had this blue dot in their taillight. I, I think it's like actually pretty illegal at this point, but most cops cut you some slack. If you, if you got a 64 VAT, like that cop's gotta be a pretty pretty big jerk to be worried about your blue dot taillights. 
Um, but you can see that this car, it's not perfect. Even at $55,000, that seems like a lot of money, but it's a Corvette, it's a 64 Corvette. This is probably one of the best design cars ever. I mean, I think the split window, obviously the, the year before is super iconic, um, but you know, you can add like another 50 grand to that price tag if you're looking at a split window. You see all the paint chips, all the imperfections. We're really trying to sh highlight, this car is like, a 50, 50 footer, you know, like if you saw this car going down the highway, it would break your neck and turn your head and you'd be happy you saw it. But uh, like what we're doing here, getting close up and stuff, then you really start looking at the car and you're like, okay, you know, it needs attention. Or if you want to have a Corvette that's not $100,000 and you can just go and drive it, uh, this is the car for that. You know, this, this car, I want to get to the good part where we, uh, we look at this, uh, this sheet here um, and kind of go through some of some of the additional stuff. Obviously it's got bigger disc brakes, drilled and slotted rotors hiding behind there. So it's been modified. So, you know, like I said, big thing in the Corvette world is all numbers matching, super original car. Uh, that has its place, that's pretty cool. Um, but this one would be a great one to resto mod. So uh, 55 grand, I mean, that's Corvette money. If you're, if you're looking at cars like that, that's what you're gonna pay for something like that. So. Take a peek at what that gets you in the Corvette world. That body style, some people just have to have it. I don't blame them. It's, it's really bitching. That silver one we had was one of my favorite cars. Um, if we could drop a quick clip of that in there, that, that was a really cool car with a five speed. I love the way it drove and handled and stuff. So good car, good car to get uh, into like a vintage sports car, Corvette. Okay, so that about wraps up the review. We only did three cars. The swap meet was a little sparse. We were there kind of on load in day. Um, so sometimes that's good. Although the swap meet was sparse, you get first crack at all those projects. So uh, you see the car earlier, you know, if it's a good deal, like really that wagon was under five grand, that might sell pretty quick. You know, some of these other cars, a car that's 55 grand might not sell as quick. You know, people need to like really take some time and think about a decision of that, of that magnitude. Uh, but so we only did three cars. There were some other cool cars there. There were some original C10 trucks, uh, just some neat things. We, we picked some interesting cars from like the whole spectrum, a full project, uh, a jalopy old race car, which is something unique. I love seeing something like that out there. It stands out. Obviously you could see during the whole video, it was tough to get a clean shot without somebody interested in the car, looking at it. I mean, even if you don't want to buy it, you want to lean in and see like what's going on with this car. So that'd be a cool project as well. It's street legal. Um, and then obviously the Corvette, you know, quintessential Americana Corvette. Uh, so Good Guys was a good time, as always. Um, there's probably one local to your area. Good Guys travels the country. So consider that they do have a swap meet area. They got a lot of cool stuff going on. We figured for Fix or Pass, why not look at some of these cars for sale? And we brought you those. So thanks for watching and keep having fun with cars.